How do we create a team atmosphere in an individual sport? This is the question that started my capstone project. My name is Joshua Sarsfield, and I'm speaking today as a candidate for the Master of Arts in Leadership Development program at Chapman University. Growing up, sports were an essential part to my family. With my mom as a physical education teacher and my dad as a tennis coach, we were constantly in a sports season. The fall was volleyball, the winter was basketball, spring was baseball, and the summer was tennis. And in all sports that I played, I played as part of a team, even in tennis. During those summers, I played in the team tennis junior league. But after an injury to my leg during baseball season when I was 13, I started to play tennis year round. Now, the high school tennis team season would only occur in the spring. And while I had played individual tournaments previously, I would have to play more tournaments and train as an individual for the rest of the year. I did not like individual tournaments. They were not fun. As I try to recall the positive moments from an individual tournament other than winning a match, I draw a blank. But what I do remember from those individual tournaments is the mental anguish of fellow athletes, the high pressure to succeed, the win at all cost mentality that I noticed when an opponent would hook a shot tennis lingo for calling a ball out when you knew it was in. Tennis high pressure and mental anguish is common throughout sports, but particularly individual sports where there's no one else responsible but yourself. Sports may show some positive attributes like higher self-esteem, emotional regulation, problem solving, and social skills. But it did not come to a shock to me that those that played individual sports were found to be more likely to experience anxiety and depression than their team sport counterparts. Nor did it surprise me when kids playing tennis, whether in a practice or in a match, were more likely to be observed to be negative to themselves rather than positive or instructional. Through all of these studies of what's positive and negative about participation in sports, it would be incorrect to assume that it was the sport itself causing all these positive or negative components. Coaches themselves may be the primary source of feedback and the supplier of these life skills. So what causes these positive attributes? Positive youth development is the idea that all children have the potential to be built up through po proper support. Due to the competitive nature of sport, a model was introduced that stated in order for there to be a climate for positive youth development, there must be, quote, empathetic relationships with adults leaders, coaches, positive interactions with peers, and the supportive involvement of parents." Unquote. Fast forward to my three years of playing college tennis for Chapman University, the mental anguish and hooking didn't change, but my experience with the sport did. Even when we had an individual tournament as we did in the preseason, the experience was significantly more positive because I was there with my teammates. Tennis was still an individual sport, but we were a team there for one another. I laughed often during practices and during a couple matches too. Twice during my time playing in college, I lost my voice cheering on my teammates. In short, I loved the team dynamic and would not have played an individual sport without it. I attribute my positive youth development to a team atmosphere. With all this in mind, when it came to creating my capstone project, I thought back to what I liked and what I didn't like about tennis. I also thought of what I could give to a community that has given me so much joy through the years. So when I thought of who my partner organization could be, I thought of where I played team tennis during the summer of my childhood. My dad is the managing director and proprietor at Whitley or Sarsfield Tennis in the Bay Area. And in the summers growing up, I played as part of that organization's team tennis league. They currently do not have a team tennis program at the moment due to low enrollment in recent years. Although they don't have a team tennis program, that does not mean a team dynamic could not be included in the instruction in order to promote positive youth development. Through this partnership, two components were made for Whitling or Sarsfield Tennis. The first is a recommended curriculum for instructors based off the tenets of transformational leadership with the aim of promoting positive youth development. In 1978, transformational leadership was theorized and is the idea that leaders need to appeal to the greater needs of their followers. Then in 1985, a model for transformational leadership was developed that included four characteristics, idealized influence, inspirational motivation, intellectual stimulation, and individualized consideration. 
this was a generic model for, for transformational leadership that said that the more of these characteristics, the greater impact a leader would have on their followers. When taken to a sports setting, it was found that coaches that promoted positive youth development in their athletes held characteristics of transformational leadership. In this context, six components of transformational leadership are important to developing positive youth development in their athletes. These being individualized consideration, acceptance of group goals, high performance expectations, appropriate role modeling, intellectual stimulation, and inspirational motivation. This sample curriculum created for Whitlinger Sarsfield Tennis lists various drills and a general outline of an eight lesson youth intermediate class as defined by the typical lesson length and schedule by the organization. Each drill is attached to at least one of these six components of transformational leadership as defined previously, which become the teaching outcomes of the lessons. Those that play individual sports are more likely to play sports for goal-oriented reasons rather than having fun when compared to their team sport counterparts. However, the main focus of Wintlinger Sarsfield Tennis is that tennis should be fun first, which concurs with research and recommendations regarding youth burnout in sports. The sport needs to be fun first rather than only about winning. The curriculum encourages the instructor to give the children and parents homework. Involvement of family and sports has been shown to aid positive youth development in a sport both on and off the court. This could be from their attendance at a match to doing something that brings the family together. While a coach cannot force these things to happen, they can and should encourage it. The curriculum also goes hand in hand with the second item developed for Whitlinger Charsfield Tennis. The second deliverable is a tri-fold brochure for parents of children playing tennis. Instructors and coaches are only with their athletes for a minimal amount of time each week. For example, if there's only a one hour lesson per week, that leaves 167 hours outside that lesson. This brochure lists four points of a positive tennis parent, three of which are based off research by Knight and Holt. These are to discuss the goals of the sport with the child, understand the emotional climate, and for parents to be positive at competitions. The fourth point of a positive tennis parent is a quote my dad would say to me in whatever sport I would play. Win with grace, lose with dignity. No matter the result, you keep your head held high, you learn, you move on to the next one. This is something that I always keep with me. My freshman year at Chapman University, I was ranked number nine during tryouts for tennis. They would only take eight that year, so my goal of playing tennis for a college did not happen. Over the summer, I continued to practice and train and run. And I worked at a Nike tennis camp, working in the office, and I ran the snack bar. One day when I was setting up the snack bar, a parent of one of the campers came by to check in on our son. She started to talk to me. And as we were talking, she asked me if I, was, if I played tennis and if I played for a university. And I ended up telling her that I did not make the team during my freshman year. But I planned on trying out again. She told me that she had a feeling that I would make the team. My sophomore year, I was ranked number eight during tryouts, and I made the team. I fulfilled my tennis goal. I ended up on the bench for most of the season, but I was happy to be on the team, and it gave me motivation to continue to improve. My junior year, I played number two doubles and number four singles at my peak. And at my peak during my senior year, I played number one doubles and number two singles. As I reflect on this Masters of Arts in Leadership Development program, one of the most important components that influenced me comes from my first semester in the program. This point is from The Habits of the Heart by Parker Palmer. Primarily the point that we are all in this together. We each may be individuals working as individuals for our own goals, but in the end, we are all in this together. So how do we create a team atmosphere in an individual sport? Well, your team is not defined simply by those on your team. True, they are your teammates or your coach, but it is also your parents, your friends, your community members, that random stranger who just had a good feeling. All of these people make a team. They are the people that will cheer you on, say good job when you win or you'll get them next time when you lose. At the end of the day, no matter the outcome, you learn from it. 
and you move on to the next one with your teammates at your side.